Welcome to Highlands Presbyterian Church, we do hope you enjoy this week's message. It can be easy to get lost in all the gifts, decorations, parties, and miss what the central focus of Christmas is about. Jesus was born to bring the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. And that is the reason for Christmas. We are made right with God because of Christ, our conquering King. This week, I'm focusing on a joy that is ours no matter what the circumstance is. For many of us, our joy in life is largely connected to the circumstances in our lives. When things are going well, we feel good. When things are going poorly, we feel bad. Our joy ebbs and flows. But for the believer in Jesus, Jesus came so that our joy may not fluctuate with our circumstances, but remain steady as we fix our eyes and our hearts on him. There is a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is based on circumstances. It is fleeting. Happiness is found in expensive gifts, good food, parties, celebration, Christmas lights. All these can bring happiness, but they are only temporary. Joy comes from within. It overflows onto others. It spills out of our heart in showers of praise and gratitude. Yet while happiness is often fleeting and disappears when circumstances change, joy remains constant even in the darkest times. Joy is there while happiness has run away. This is the joy of Jesus. That is what Christ, our conquering King, brings to us when he comes. It is the joy of forgiveness. It is the joy of grace. It is the joy of love. And it is the joy of mercy. In the Gospel of Luke, we see in chapter 2, verses 8 to 20, we find that there were shepherds in the field, ordinary men doing their ordinary jobs. They were not expecting anything extraordinary that night. But then out of nowhere, an angel appeared to them, announcing the birth of the Savior. This was not just good news. It was great news. It was news that could cause great joy for all people. The shepherds in their ordinary lives experienced an extraordinary joy, a joy knowing that the Savior had been born. The joy was not for them, as the angel announced, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. This joy is not limited to a select few. It is not confined to a certain group of people. It was a universal joy, a joy for all people, regardless of their status, their background, their past. This joy was for everyone, because the Saviour is for everyone. The shepherds did not keep it to themselves. They went to Bethlehem, found the baby Jesus, then spread the word concerning what they had been told to them about this child. They shared the joy they had experienced with others. They did not hoard it, they did not keep it to themselves. They shared it, they spread it, they made sure that others knew about it. This is the event that was, we were to, heard about in our reading this morning. The joy that the shepherds experienced was not a fleeting joy. It was not a temporary joy. It was a lasting joy that stayed with them after they had seen the baby Jesus. They returned glorifying and praising God. It did not fade away. It remained with them. It stayed with them. It just was a joy that lasted. A joy that came from knowing the Savior. It was a joy that came from knowing that God has sent his Son into the world to save us from our sins. It was a joy that came from knowing that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only Son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It was a joy that came from knowing that God was with us, that he was for us and he was on our side. In our lives we too can experience this joy. We too can know the Saviour. We too can share the joy with others. We too can have a joy that lasts. We too 
can have a joy that comes from knowing that God is with us, that He is for us, that He is on our side. This joy the shepherds experience, this is the joy we can experience. This is the joy that comes from knowing the Savior. This is the joy that is for people. This joy that lasts, this is the joy of the Lord. What John wrote in his Gospel is a reason for joy no matter what we face in life. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This passage gives us two reasons for the joy that does not have to change with the circumstances and the seasons. It can be constant in our lives, a grounding attitude grounding attitude in the face of all the world has to offer. We can have joy because God came to us. A common misconception people carry around with them is that to be reunited with God in a right relationship with Him, we must earn His acceptance through good works. One of the greatest joy robbers in our lives is thinking we can never be good enough. We are broken and flawed people who hurt others. We make mistakes. We live selfish lives. If we are relying on our own abilities to earn a connection with God, we will always be disappointed. God is at work in our lives, even when we don't see it. Many times life can look like a disaster from our perspective. It can be hard for us to find a reason for joy in our circumstances. However, if we look closely, we might see God coming near to us, like He did that first Christmas night, and let us know that He is making something of our lives when we are tempted to feel hopeless. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Joy is at the heart of Christmas. Because knowing that we could never make it to Him, God came to us. Christianity is the only religion in the world where the deity does what is necessary to unite humanity to God. Paul emphatically makes this statement in the book of Romans. He insists we can be saved through Jesus. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. You make known to me the path of your life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. That's why James tell us, tells us to be joyful in trials. And Paul tells us our salvation was worked out before we even have an opportunity to do anything to earn it. The gift of God's grace is offered to us generously, without price, because we could never afford this on our own. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. This is why the characters in the Christmas story were so overjoyed. For the shepherds in the field, from the shepherds in the field to Simeon in the temple, because the long-awaited arrival of the Messiah, our conquering King, meant God had finally come to rescue us. The second reason joy can be constant, a reality for us in our lives, is because of how much God loves us and is committed to our transformation through His power. God loves us just as we are. He even loves us too much to leave us as we are. He wants to transform us. Looking further in John chapter 1, we find that it is through Jesus that we see the glory and fullness of God. His arrival among us should fill us with joy, because not only did God come close to us, but He came because He loved us. Do you realize that if you, every one of you, is loved by God? Not just tolerated or put up with, but loved with an agape love, deeply loved. In fact, John says, this love that God has for us is like that of a father for his children. 
Jesus came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the key to understanding our second reason for abiding joy. When Jesus came to us, he came full of grace, like a wrapped gift shared from one to another that can bring joy to our hearts. So this gift of Jesus is grace from God. We haven't earned it, we don't deserve it, but God offers it to us. And when we recognize it, it fills us with joy. God loves us just the way we are. Jesus also came with full of truth that shows us the areas of our lives that must be transformed to live the fullest life possible. The book of, of 1 John expands on this idea when it says in John 1, uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 9, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. The reason Jesus came to us and manifested his love among us is that he desires us to find incredible joy in him. In order for this to happen, it requires the gift of truth and grace. It is the most loving thing to do for another, to embrace with full acceptance and humble truth-telling. Joy is a result of grace. Grace is a word that shows up a lot in church, but that is because it is the way in which we are able to live in joy. Our Heavenly Father sent Jesus to the manger in Bethlehem because he wanted to dwell among us to demonstrate his amazing grace and life-changing truth. We can experience joy in our lives no matter what the circumstance because we can be confident in knowing that God is with us and that God is for us. We will stand, he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. In conclusion, there's a quote Charles Spurgeon said, there is a marvelous medicinal power in joy. Most medicines are distasteful, but this, which is the best of all medicines, is sweet to the taste and comforting to the heart. This blessed joy is very contagious. The grace of joy is contagious. Only joy will oil the wheels of your life's machinery. Only joy will strengthen you for your daily labor. Only joy will beautify you and give you an influence over the lives of others. Joy is turning in to what God is doing around you. It's tuning in to what God is doing around you. Seeing the world through his eyes. Picking up on his delight in us, his children. Anyone can find happiness for a while. Happiness depends on what is happening to you. Joy is different. Joy goes deeper. Joy is when, you, when your whole being sings because you have caught a glimpse of God at work. Joy can creep up on you and surprise you in unexpected places. This Christmas, may you come to find a deep and abiding joy because of the love of God and the sacrifice of Jesus, our conquering King, who holds the power to change us and to change the world. Shall we pray? Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for sending your Son Jesus, our conquering King, to bring us into a relationship with you, to make us right before you. You sent him down onto this earth to dwell among us and to be a sacrifice for our sins. Lord, we just thank you and we just give you all the praise and glory. And may we live in the abiding joy that you give us. Amen.